Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Tom Haru. Uh, I'm a lead software engineer here at Thousand Eyes working on the Device Layer project. Uh, device Layer is about how we can integrate device level metrics and metadata into <coughs> network level performance diagnosis and thus to application performance diagnosis. So I don't think I really need to qualify that network performance and in cloud application performance are now very critical things. That's, I mean, I think we can take that as a given now. And it's possible to measure the performance of applications by active testing. We can distribute agents around the world and we can probe into the network and see how this is behaving across the internet as a whole. Now, so if we are to measure from given one agent and one cloud application, we can take an end-to-end -end internet path, which uh, much like our previous demonstrations, this is a trace route style thing where we can get uh, the individual hops along the path and uh, both from our local infrastructure, and we've hidden the details there, but out to the internet. Now, there's some data that's essentially missing from this context. We, we see dots. What do these dots represent? I mean, in, in a trace route style thing, these, these dots represent IP addresses, which you can take to be interfaces. But what are they in terms of devices? Are they your device? What sort of device is it? If you have two different IP addresses at the same number of hops down the path, are they in fact the same device in some sort of multipath type scenario? This kind of information is very useful when it comes to like diagnosing fundamental end-to-end -end performance issues. So in this example here, we have a hop very early along our path. Um, and these nodes actually represent our own network. And we have a very, very high latency hop in this, a three seconds in a hop, which is 10 times around the internet. So something is clearly very wrong here. But what, what is it? Um, what's going on within this hop? We don't, if active testing enables us to see that there are problems and roughly where they are, but in terms of diagnosis, we're not sure. We're left to kind of poke around our own infrastructure, uh, check through all our device tooling, log into devices, check what's going on. So approaching that from the the top down with the uh, application and network level testing and coming from the bottom up. With device layer, we can contextualize the information that we get from active probing with low level information that we can extract from the devices themselves. So for example, instead of seeing two separate hops within your visualized path visualization, we can actually see that these two hops represent the same device. These are two interfaces within one device. And we know that this, in fact, is our firewall. And firewalls are everyone's best friend in keeping networks functioning without breaking, of course. And similarly, we we're able to see that this other um, two-sided path has uh, two layer three switches on it. But they are, in fact, separate devices. They're not the same device. So not all parallel hops are the same device. Similarly, within the individual hops, we can now look down towards layer two devices and expose the topology that exists in between the hops themselves. So inside these gaps here, we can now see down into layer two topologies, which are essentially invisible to active end-to-end -end probing. So I'm going to talk about the kind of data that we collect in this and kind of how it all goes together briefly before I have a quick demo. So device layer is about using, uh, taking a new vantage point and a new way of extracting data from networks to contextualize the exact, the, the data that we already have collected from end to end probing and from other sources such as BGP. So it gives us a view from the top to the bottom uh, of the network stack to aid diagnosis, giving you context on the issues that you have. And we're also able to go in and automatically discover and map your layer two topologies. We also provide the ability to extract the metrics directly from devices. So instead of um, timing packets and seeing how they're affecting the network, we can just ask and check in on them. And this supports all kinds of networks, uh, devices, from layer two devices like access points to routers, switches at layer two and three, and firewalls at layer two and three, and load balancers. We can try to integrate all of that together to give us a better picture of what's going on in the network. <coughs> and this is... Uh, put together like the rest of our product as a SaaS based system. So we have uh, an enterprise agent. This is integrated into our enterprise agent. Um, and we, we extract the information currently using SNMP. We're not particularly tied to SNMP. It's just a means of acquiring data for now. But we're essentially a SaaS based platform. So this is um, 
a very simple uh, configuration agent within your network and shipping it off to the, our back end for analysis and visualization. So what data are we able to collect from devices just now, where we're at currently? Uh, we pull a lot of device metadata, so like the device uh, names are actual names, not the uh, host names of their interfaces, but the names themselves, the names that you would configure them by. The interfaces and the names of the interfaces. You can say, oh, this, this link is actually the VLAN to Bob's desk or something along those lines. Uh, mapping, this helps you get more context on where things are in the network. Uh, when you see the past visualization, you can now see exactly what specific things are, and you can go from your application behavior down to the individual devices. We collect metrics for, uh, specifically for the interfaces within the device, uh, availability, so that's the true availability, rather than, oh, we fired some packets in, some of them went missing. Where they went missing remains to be seen. Um, throughput, we can now extract directly, instead of attempting to measure throughput by, by precisely timed packets, which is, works in some respect, it's still a little inaccurate. We can get ground truth throughput. Similarly for discards and errors. Discards and errors are fundamentally the cause of where network loss comes from. Knowing how, so there is your kind of root cause problems. And also we can extract network topology. So we use, uh, we use LLDP and CDP metadata to work out mm -hmm. the physical network map within, the, uh, within layer two. Um, and we also are able to extract things like link capacity so that we can see how, how like, if links are going overutilized or not. Deployment for this is fairly similar, simple, like much like our other products. This, this is based on an agent-based model. So we have a, a very low configuration agent that goes within your uh, branch office or within your data center. You uh, grant it essentially access to your management VLAN. Uh, and then the rest is done through our SaaS-based uh, cloud application. There isn't any sort of deploying of databases or uh, making scalability uh, a lot easier to achieve. So how this actually goes together and works, fairly simple uh, through enterprise agents. I mean, if it looks like something that can run x86 software, we can probably put an agent in it. Um, it's very flexible in terms of where it goes. Then back to the uh, cloud application. Within our, within our cloud web app, um, it's just a matter of configuring your SNMP credentials. Uh, we support V2 and V3 credentials. Um, pretty simple. And then point us at some networks. Select one of your enterprise agents that you've deployed. Point us at some specific subnets. And uh, we can go out and well, we can scan to find devices with the credentials that you've given us. We can also do this periodically if you, new devices are being added. So you can get, then get notifications when new devices are added or new interfaces appear. Devices are discovered. You know, we, can, we pull up you know, their uh, critical metadata, you know, their type. You can come in, you can correct the information if it's not to, to, your, to your exact uh, mental model. Uh, you can select the specific interfaces that you need to monitor, if some are of interest and some are not of interest. And you can also set up alerting and notifications. And then it's just a matter of hitting save and device layer data begins being collected. This, this will then integrate into path visualization. If your own devices are showing up in mm -hmm. PathViz, then you're now, they're now going to appear using this new device context. So <laughs> these, these agents are deployed into your environment, right? Yes. So they're just like proxy, not really a proxy, but I'm deploying these agents to my environment, and then I configure those agents to communicate with my SNMP devices? Yes. Is that, and that's, that's yeah. how it's working, yeah. right? Yeah. And then it sends all that data. Then, then we take, take that, do some local work on that, and then send that back to our own. And then you only have one device that's actually communicating with the internet, so you exactly. can breach a security wall easily enough. Exactly, and that is Pretty all. common. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's doing that. They'll give you an on-prem gateway device exactly. that collects the data of some sort and then exports it out for analysis. Yeah. Um, in terms of collecting SNMP data, for more interfaces, do you charge me more? The more uh, or is, it, is there ultimately a consumption-based licensing somewhere? It's uh, based on a device model. Right. We charge for monitoring devices. So if I collect all 48 interfaces, it doesn't cost me 48 times more like no. some for, for monitoring tools. Fine. I mean, <laughs> you know, you get to extremely large numbers of interfaces, you're going to cause more problems for your device itself yeah. than for yeah. how we collect the data, certainly. So I can now do a 
small demo of this. I hope this comes to the full screen in an appropriate way. Good. So while Tom is setting that up, um, we uh, the device layer is part of the enterprise agent. So what Nick covered, uh, you don't need to install a different type of agent just for this. So this. Uh, uh, once we release this, it's self the agent self-update, and uh, we have that capability in all the agents, uh, that uh, enterprise agents that our customers use. Um, and so if you decide to use device layer, you can use that uh, off the bat. So we've uh, set up a kind of small demo of uh, how this might be used to kind of diagnose an application level pro problem and contextualizing it with device data and getting to a root level um, cause. So this is uh, an HTTP server test. This is the availability of an HTTP server test between uh, one agent and an intranet web server within a small branch style network. Um, and we can see that there are, the, the test itself is downloading uh, just a, a file periodically. Um, and we can see that there are periodic, rather extreme outages in this uh, availability. It, 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 every, every eight hours or so, something is going uh, amiss. So we can tr go down to the table view and see that uh, our one agent in this particular time slice is uh, having an error because it's uh, in the, uh, of receiving because it's timing out because it's not able to transmit the entire file within the designated uh, timeout window. So there's probably an issue with throughput in here. So we can just skip this over to the other view to see the HTTP throughput. And we can see, yes, there is in fact uh, a very uh, violent drop in throughput between the uh, other, the times where we saw the outage, uh, we are seeing a throughput of around 500 millisecond, uh, 500 kilobits per second, whereas normally we're seeing a full 100 megabits of throughput. So clearly this is some sort of network issue. So let's uh, go down to the uh, network layer and try and diagnose this. Blame the network. Or blame the network, as the case may be, as this is probably uh, <laughs> what is amiss. <laughs> let's face it. So, Unsurprisingly, correlated within our massive drop in HTTP throughput, we are seeing loss within the network. In fact, 100% packet loss is a very, uh, very severe periodic network event. Um, I mean, unsurprisingly, <laughs> jumping to other metrics, you can see that latency is spiking to second-like values across the local network, which is, again, indicative of something majorly going wrong. So let's uh, go down to the... Uh, path visualization and see uh, how this data is traveling over a network and how we can use our device context to improve diagnosis. So our agent on the left uh, and our uh, target web server on the right, there's some small confusion in there in terms of how the path maps out because we lost so many packets along the way. But we can see it's a, it's a short hop path that's within a local network going from a uh, layer three switch to a router to another layer three switch. And we can already see um, that something is very uh, severely going wrong in this path. We're actually seeing, why did my sores not work? Okay, there we go. Um, we can actually see that there's a 91% packet loss here to, the, to our router, which we now know to be a router of our own naming. So this is uh, CSC router. We know that this is a router known as uh, DS1. And over here, we can see another router, DS2. So our path is going DS1, router, DS2. So okay. let's... Sorry, is that just showing the uh, that one uh, path? So if another um, agent is on the network and it can get through, will it still show up red under that specific agent? On this specific path will be like this, the other path will be going from somewhere else. Um, <coughs> we'll be fine if okay. that's the case. I mean, in a you know more realistic point, this would be reaching out to the internet, but to kind of demonstrate that this is for problems within your own infrastructure, we're only going within this here, but it works either way. So we can now uh, use the context that we get from devices. <coughs> see that there's something clearly amiss around this hop. 
And we can just jump straight to this new layer that we have caught from, from the network layer down to device layer, which is going to come up. And I'm just going to open a separate page so we can jump back and forward. And this uh, is our new device layer. We can see that actually we've jumped from to that to that, the context of that specific device, uh, DS2, and we've actually uh, selected the interface that we hit within the path visualization. So we know the throughput metrics of that specific interface that was in question. We can also remove these selections and see aggregations across our entire network uh, or specific devices. So I'll just go this back to its original device. So we can see that our periodic high throughput bursts correlated with the uh, network issue that we were having. Now, this high throughput causing loss, we can probably make some assumptions that there's uh, going to be discards in, within this link, uh, within this path. And of course, when we switch to the discards view, similarly, we're seeing bursts of discards, which correlate again with the outages and the throughput going through that link. <coughs> yeah. Now, if you have uh, multiple sub, say multiple sub interfaces set up on a single interface, can you do individual polling for that as well? Or can you view just the primary interface? And I know we've, where I work, we've had an issue where say some of the sub interfaces are set up in a VRF and there's issues with certain information not being sent back if it's in a VRF via SNMP where it's not responding to you. So you're not getting accurate results. I didn't know if there was so something with. Cur currently we're, um because of this, because the, we're, how the metrics track across isn't particularly consistent uh, across implementations. So we're working primarily with uh, metrics from physical interfaces. Now we collect the metadata across all the interfaces, so we still map the IPs, but um, we're currently connecting the information, collecting the information directly from the physical interfaces because that's actually where the networking happens. Yep. Um, the notion of what is the speed of, of virtual interfaces becomes a little bit more uh, complex to reason about. We are going to move towards how to capture these relationships between the virtual type interfaces and the physical interfaces, but of course. Doing that, you're essentially, what you're doing there is you're fixing limitations in SNMP, right? Because a lot of what's presented is just going to be whatever those OID support sub-interfaces and rates and things like that are going to vary widely across, you know, the, you know, if they don't support Device. the IFMIB and, yeah. you know, correctly and things like that. So you're, you're, you're essentially fixing a fundamental SNMP problem is what you're having to do. It's, I mean, fundamentally what we're trying to do, yes, um, is get what data we can get consistently. Right. Data that doesn't work well across vendors. I mean, you know, if there's a great demand for it, we can, we'll look towards it, but we're trying to get a consistent model of where network performance happens rather than chasing around these specific little things because SNMP standards are weak fundamentally. At best. At best. Yeah. I think yeah. that's important to say because you're only going to be as you're only going to have as accurate information as you're presented, right? You're going to have to make assumptions otherwise, exactly. right? So if your SNMP polling is going to say, this VPLS interface is 10 megabits per second, when in reality it's software interface, right? It's whatever the physical hardware is plus the, you know, plus the rate limit that you're giving it, the CIR or whatever. So you're going to have to make assumptions based on those. And assuming you're getting accurate data. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> I wasn't even going to go there, but yes. <laughs> Again, I'm showing my disdain for SNMP. Uh, well, quite. Yeah, well, welcome to the beta of my existence also. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can only imagine. Yeah. So, I mean, we see that there's an interface. We know that it was the interface of that particular uh, hop in the pathways that was having losses. So, let's see where within our topology that's occurring. So, we can actually just scroll down to the topology view uh, of our demo network. This uh, cluster of nodes here is the demo environment we've set up for this, which is actually uh, connected within our own uh, office environment. This is actually our office. Um, we have uh, an automatic layout function for this uh, to try and uh, you know, provide something relatively clear. But how people view their own networks is very much, it can, can be in many ways a personal thing. They, they may have their own mental model of how they're uh, networks to be laid out. You're not using the right colours. That's not my corporate colour scheme. 
Well, <laughs> there's, there's CSF for that, but I'm not a big <laughs> so. The big enough PO, they'll fix it, Greg. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we also enable you to kind of guide and uh, drag notes yep. around this to help you, you know, make this fit of exactly what it is you're expecting, because mm. we sadly can't measure that. See, the challenge here is that I've seen the, the SNMP that devices reports is often random, mm. randomly incorrect, or varies from device family. So what one device, what is often reported in SNMP as an interface discard is actually just not, it's just the device being um, um, faulty. Well, I mean, you know, yep. an indication of a discard within a device still a, an issue you probably would, you know, it's going to give aid you some context. In mm. most cases, we've seen yeah. the, where you expect them to be, but it is SNMP. It's full of surprises like this. It's only partially trustable. Yeah. It's not an absolute source of truth. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a way of getting context from the other side. Like, you know, yeah, no, there is definitely. no absolute truth, right. you know, from the top or from the bottom, but trying to be mm. somewhere is, you know, enables you to get to diagnosis of root causes. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I, I like how you're using it to enrich other things, right? I mean, it's another, it's a corroborating it's a point. point, right? right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, you can do a lot with SNMP chasing around building these colossal spreadsheet type oh, yeah. interfaces, which I'm sure are useful for many ends, but... This... Are they though? I mean, well, no. <laughs> that's not my business. <laughs> so, we have our network map here. Uh, and we know there are discards occurring, but where precisely, uh, oh, sorry, I should point out, we also um, work within, uh, you'll often see redundant connectivity in networks, so we, we are able to kind of collapse these things together, especially in the case of uh, link aggregations. So we can also just open these up to see within the individual links. So we should just uh, highlight this to a non-trivial amount of discards. We can see that the discards that we're seeing are also elsewhere in the network. They're present on some nodes, so there are interfaces within nodes suffering from discards. And we can see that a link connected to DS1 is suffering from discards. Similarly, a link connected to uh, the CSC router, between the CSC router and DS2 is also suffering from non-zero discards. And remember, our path that we're actually under test was going DS1 at the top, CSC, DS2. Um, that was how you saw it at layer three. Going down to layer, you know, though probably layer two hops within that, we can also see there's an, an AS, so some sort of access switch uh, connected to this, suffering from discards, and at the other end, there's another access switch. We can get some context from this and see that an idea of how traffic might be flowing in our network at layer two. So, what are the causes of discards in a network, uh, generally? Over uh, utilization. So we can switch this over to the uh, throughput view. Bear in mind we have the throughput and the link speeds, so we have a notion of capacity available to us. So we can see how utilization is at risk. At 50%, which is a fairly very high over a sampling window uh, utilization, we can see those two links in question are also having problems. Uh, that's pretty poor, but if we drop this down to say 5% or 6%, um, we can see, which again, 6% aggregate utilization uh, in the face of bursty traffic, as many much land traffic is, you're gonna, that's potentially gonna have risks towards uh, uh, discards as well. And we can actually see a pattern emerge within this. There's clearly some traffic flow from uh, AS1, uh, 100 megabits on a gigabit path, between uh, DS2 and uh, CSC, there's uh, 100 megabits on a 100 megabit path, uh, another, gigabit path, 100 megabits, and 100 megabit path, 100 megabits. So we can see, in fact, that there are some links within this network which are very high capacity and links which are fairly heavily utilized. Now, obviously what jumps out here... So you are enriching all the link speeds that you are collecting via SNMP to that map and now you have this context. Yeah. Yes, so you know, by, by we can get to the kind of root cause of problems. Discards are an effect, um, whereas over the utilization is a cause, you know, so that's a utilization to loss, which then turns into loss on the network layer, um, helping you kind of go from what was an application problem down to the uh, low level problem. Now, how this actually impacts it, uh, you can see that there's discards within the network that's gonna cause the problems, which I think 
and we can see that there are links configured at low speeds, suggesting that's what's going on. And you can go in and say, well, look, if you wanted to fix this problem, here are some devices which seem to be misconfigured. Uh, here's exactly where to go, not, not clicking around uh, about. So we've kind of gone from right at the top. Well, we've got, we can you know, work back. We, we, we went to our device layer, which was causing loss, which we were able to see in the uh, network layer, and which eventually, you know, impacts our application layer, kind of giving us a full context on how to diagnose uh, these sorts of things. So that's... Now, do you guys give recommendations when you find an issue within the interface? I mean... Like if it detects uh, misconfiguration or whatever that might be contributing to the problem? It would be, be an interesting idea, certainly, yeah. I mean, it would be interesting to be able to say, hey, maybe... Yeah. I mean, once you have more context, that's a thing, mm -hmm. you know, but these, you know... Well, we haven't really discussed anything like misconfiguration issues, like a quas problem on an interface right. or, you know, just routing policies being wrong. And, and further layers, like things like QoS or something that, you know, as we move on, we're going to integrate more context helping to kind of right. glue all this right. uh, together. I think that's, yeah, I really need to push through with this. Uh, so, yeah.